It's always tragic when someone with a promising career in an industry they love has that opportunity taken away from them. The case of Tammy Lynn Leppert is no exception. Tammy was a promising film star, having landed a role in an incredibly popular movie, Scarface. But Tammy's life would take an unexpected turn when she vanished without a trace. Investigators would end up following a series of bizarre and unexpected leads while searching for the missing woman. But the clues and evidence they found, well, they were strange to put it lightly. Tammy Lynn Lepper was born on the 5th of February, 1965, and from a very young age, she was destined for stardom. She had the incredible confidence needed to perform in front of an audience, as well as beauty pageant judges, without a care in the world. She'd been doing this from a very young age, but later on in life, she aspired to become a Hollywood actress. But as she stood on the edge of realizing her dreams, she suddenly disappeared without explanation. In the weeks that followed, investigators would learn of Tammy's strange behavior and anxiety before she vanished, and since her demeanor is said to have changed overnight, many people believe something happened to her that affected her so deeply that her life would never be the same again. Speaking of Tammy as a child, her mother, Linda Curtis, described her as a remarkably beautiful girl who would always wake up with a smile on her face, and who still had that same smile when she went to bed at night. It's no surprise then that Linda decided to enter Tammy into a beauty pageant while she was still young, and it soon became apparent she had a knack for it. Linda started acting as Tammy's agent, and before long, they had to keep up with an increasingly demanding schedule, as they needed to attend rehearsals for the pageants, as well as casting interviews, since Tammy also had aspirations of becoming an actress. These days, we all understand that this type of schedule with the child is, to put it mildly, unhealthy. But keep in mind, this was back in the 60s and 70s, so this information wasn't really available. With this in mind, it isn't very often that such a hectic schedule remains sustainable. And after Tammy turned seven, her parents' relationship started to fail, and they ultimately decided to get a divorce. But Linda and Tammy forged ahead. They moved out of their family home and continued chasing Tammy's dream of stardom. But mind you, Tammy was just seven years old, so I don't know whose dream they were really chasing. Tammy's or Linda's? That's a question that's still up for debate. Being an experienced model and theater agent, Linda took on extra clients, one of whom would eventually become a part of the family. 11-year-old Wing Flanagan soon moved in with the mother and daughter duo, and in just a short while, he and Tammy became very close, with people describing the relationship as akin to being brother and sister. Wing would later describe that Tammy would always kiss him on the cheek before he left the house for the day, and at first, he would feel embarrassed by the lipstick mark that it left on his cheek. But as time went by, he started to cherish the gesture, and would often leave the mark on his cheek as a badge of honor. As time went by, Tammy proved that her success as a beauty queen was no fluke, and by the time she turned 16, she'd taken part in more than 300 pageants, walking away victorious an impressive 280 times, which is no small feat. Then, in 1983, Tammy got the chance that she was looking for. She landed a role in the movie Spring Break, which was directed by Sean S. Cunningham, probably best known for directing the movie Friday the 13th, A Stranger is Watching. She played the role of a female boxer and is also believed to have been the model for the movie's poster. Everything seemed to be moving in the right direction, and Tammy's future looked bright, to say the least. She had cemented her status as a beauty queen, without any doubt, and now she'd landed a role in the movie. But then, everything changed. And to this day, no one is certain what or who caused it. But soon enough, Tammy's life would never be the same. When filming on the set of Spring Break had been completed in July of 1982, the cast and crew were invited to attend a rap party to celebrate. And Tammy decided to attend on her own, not bringing any guests with her. It isn't known exactly what happened, but following the party, Tammy's family and friends, including Wing, stated that she seemed like a completely different person. Her demeanor had become sullen, and while she used to be talkative and bubbly, she now suddenly retreated into her own world. Her smile seemed to fade, and when Wing asked her what was wrong, she would quickly change the subject, at times appearing to be too scared to talk about whatever was bothering her. On other occasions, she would merely laugh the question off and try to make light of the situation. But those who knew her well could tell that something was very wrong, 
but Tammy remained tight-lipped. Her mother started noticing that she would sometimes sit or stand in front of the house's windows, staring outside as if she was watching the street as cars passed by, but she could never get Tammy to explain why. On one occasion, she'd been looking out the window when she called Wing over to look at something. She pointed to her neighbor's house across the street and asked him to tell her what he saw. He pointed out that they'd bought a new van, to which she replied, exactly. This confused him and he asked her to elaborate. She stated that the van had mirrored windows that could hide anyone inside and added that she was certain someone was watching her from inside that van. This must have been exceedingly hard for Linda to see since she was used to seeing her daughter happy with a smile on her face and always ready to take on the world. Whereas now she'd seemingly shut down and refused to let anyone in, either out of fear or because she didn't want to get them involved. This was already worrying behavior but things were only set to get worse. Tammy soon started acting paranoid, as if someone was out to get her. And soon she started refusing to eat any food that hadn't been prepared without her being present. This made it seem as though she was worried that someone might tamper with her food or drinks. But Linda couldn't imagine who would want to harm her in such a way, since Tammy was liked by everyone who knew her. Wing stated that on one occasion, the phone in the house rang and he went to answer it. But before he could do so, Tammy made sure to tell him that if the person on the other side of the line asked for her, he was to say that she wasn't home and that he didn't know where she was. She then made a startling admission to Linda. She stated that, quote, they were trying to end her life, but she wouldn't divulge any further information. Linda did her best to figure out who they were, but was never able to get Tammy to say any more since she was too afraid. This gave rise to further worrying behavior. Tammy would stay in her room for most of the day, and before she ate any meal that was served to her, she would get someone else to test it first, in case it had been tampered with. Since she never opened up to her mother or any of her friends, no one was certain whether she was afraid of something or someone that was real, or whether she was in the midst of a nervous breakdown and was afraid of things that were simply imaginary. Now, having a nervous breakdown is an easy assumption to make, especially when someone had never shown such behavior before. And since her claims seemed rather outlandish, much like a movie script, no one could be blamed for wondering whether she was suffering from a mental condition. After some time went by, Tammy eventually gave in and informed her mother that it all started when she attended the after party for spring break. She told her that while there, she'd seen something that she wasn't supposed to see. And as a result, someone was looking for her and she was worried that when they found her, they would kill her. Try as she might, Linda couldn't get Tammy to tell her what she saw that night, and she was at a loss as to how to help her daughter, which must be a terribly helpless feeling as a parent. All she could do was try to be there for her when she needed her, and hopefully she would find the courage to eventually open up. There was hope on the horizon, though. In 1983, Tammy landed a role in the movie Scarface, which starred Al Pacino. If ever there was a chance for her to make an impression, this was it and she seemed to grasp the opportunity with both hands. While filming was underway, she stayed in Miami, Florida with her lawyer, Walter Leibowitz, who was a friend of her family's. In the film, she played the part of a beautiful woman who distracts one of the main characters while he's waiting in a getaway car. It's been said that she made quite the impression on the film set, and before long, she was being spoken about by some of the bigger actors. Tammy not only seemed happier, but she relished the chance that she'd been given, and it seemed that she might be on the road to recovery. That is, until the fourth day of filming, when things once again took a turn for the worse. One scene in the movie showed someone being shot, and to make it as realistic as possible, the shot included fake blood coming out of the wound with force. While this would be just another day on set for most actors and crew, Tammy, who was watching the scene being filmed, found it too unnerving to watch, and it had a profound effect on her. The casting director then contacted Walter, the family friend, informed him that something was wrong with Tammy. He stated that she'd started crying uncontrollably while the scene was being acted out, and eventually she had to be removed from the set and taken to her trailer, where they tried in vain to calm her down. She seemed to be frightened beyond help and was trembling with anxiety, but still she wouldn't tell anyone what was going on. Walter then contacted Linda to tell her what had happened, and he suggested that Linda take Tammy to a doctor or a psychiatrist to figure out once and for all what was causing her so much distress. He feared that if she didn't get help, her career would be over. No one can handle such a large amount of pressure on their own for very long, 
And at this point, Temi must have felt very alone, since she was too scared to tell anyone what or who was bothering her. Keep in mind that she was never the type of person to exaggerate a situation, and hence her fear must have been very real. Walter also suggested that if someone was really coming after Tammy, she and Linda should go immediately to the police to file a report, and hopefully get the help she needs. But this never happened, and Linda didn't know what to do next. Walter was of the opinion that Tammy wasn't delusional, and that her claims were very true. He added that once he heard her talking about money laundering, he thought this may have had something to do with whatever she saw that night, but he was unable to confirm his suspicions. Following her breakdown, Tammy went back home and Linda immediately followed Walter's advice. She took her to the Brevard County Sheriff's Office, where she felt that they would give her the help she needed. But Tammy refused to divulge anything to the police and didn't even mention that she feared for her life. Tammy may have been a lot of things throughout her life, but a rat wasn't one of them. The only solace in this situation at this point was that Tammy was home among the people she knew and loved. But this seemed to bring her very little comfort as her behavior only continued to baffle Linda. There were times when Tammy seemed almost normal. Some days she would wake up and be as talkative and bubbly as ever. But this usually didn't last long, and soon enough she would retreat back into her own fearful world where no one else was allowed. This gave Linda and Wing hope that she was on the road to recovery and that she would eventually return to her normal self. But those hopes were soon dashed when Tammy seemed to finally snap and she would never be the same again. In July of 1983, Wing was sitting in the living room reading a book when Tammy suddenly confronted him and accused him of looking at her. He was completely baffled and could only defend himself by saying that she was mistaken. He quickly realized something was very wrong and tried to talk to her, asking her what was going on. But this only seemed to make matters worse as she suddenly flew into a rage yelling at him before suddenly storming out of the house. She opened the front door and ran out onto the porch, but she suddenly found the situation all too daunting, and she changed her mind. But then, the front door of the house had blown shut behind her and it automatically locked, leaving her trapped outside. This caused her a massive amount of anxiety, and she started frantically banging on the door with her fists while screaming hysterically for someone to let her back inside. But before anyone could move to open the door for her, she'd gotten a hold of a baseball bat and started smashing the house's windows giving us some serious insight into her state of mind. Wing eventually managed to open the door to let her back in, but as soon as he did so, Tammy threw herself at him and knocked him to the ground. She then jumped on him and started hitting him, all the while screaming at him. She was convinced that he had locked her out of the house on purpose, when the door had actually just blown shut by the wind. Linda heard the commotion of windows breaking and yelling, and she rushed to the living room to see what was going on. She couldn't believe that she was seeing Tammy attack the man who was like a brother to her. And in an effort to calm her down, she told her over and over again that she loved her. At first, Tammy barely seemed to notice. But when Linda repeatedly told her, it's your mother, it's me, Tammy, she seemed to snap out of it and started to calm down. This was by far the worst incident regarding Tammy's behavior. And Linda knew she needed to find help and quickly. She decided that Tammy should undergo a psychiatric evaluation and she took her to a psychiatric hospital in Brevard County. She was placed under observation for 72 hours, during which time tests were done to check for alcohol and drugs in her system. But these came back clear, and it was determined that she was suffering from no mental issues. Staff at the hospital had no choice but to send her back home with no resolution, which would have been very worrying for Linda, since she was concerned that Tammy would have a similar episode again, and she might not be able to get her to calm down next time. Tammy was taken home, but as soon as they arrived, she turned to her mother and stated that, quote, he was still after her and that he would likely soon end her life. She asked that when that happens, Linda make him pay for what he did. But once again, she refused to tell her mother who this person was that was after her, and it became clear no progress had been made. Tammy's fear was as real as ever with no end in sight. The day after she returned home, Tammy called one of her friends, Rick Adams, and asked him to pick her up. She told him that she needed to go to church to pray, since she'd seen something she wasn't supposed to, and feared that she would be tracked down and killed. Her friend would later tell investigators that while they were at the church, Tammy was praying and crying inconsolably. And once they left, she told him that she loved him and that she may need to go away for a while. He then drove her home and left, perplexed by what had happened. 
The following day, she contacted a different friend, Keith Roberts, and asked if he could accompany her to Cocoa Beach. Linda wasn't sure whether this was a good idea, since Tammy was still acting strangely. But she allowed her to go with him, and they left the house at around 11 a.m. But still, she felt nervous. She felt that Tammy was possibly making an effort to carry on with her life as normal, since she would usually stay in her room, or at the very least, in the house. Little did she know that as she watched her daughter walk down the driveway and get into her friend's car, she would never see her daughter again. When questioned by investigators, Keith later reported that he and Tammy were on their way to the beach when they got into an argument. She asked if she could borrow $300 from him, then got upset when he refused to drive her to Fort Lauderdale, where she wanted to meet with a friend. He tried to reason with her, but she seemed to get more upset with every passing moment, and she eventually told him to stop the car so that she could get out. They'd only driven about five miles at this point, and he pulled into the Glass Bank building's parking lot to let her out of the car, with this being the final time Tammy was ever seen. No one is certain what was going through Tammy's mind at this point, but it's clear that she was looking for help, as she called her aunt's nearby shop three times but had forgotten that she was on vacation, so she never received the calls. She then phoned one of her other friends, but they were also unable to answer the phone and would only realize later that Tammy had tried to contact them. What happened to Tammy after that remains a mystery. She never returned home that night and has not been seen or heard from since. Linda filed a missing person report on the 11th of July, but Tammy was nowhere to be found. It seemed to her friends and family as though she'd simply vanished into thin air. During their investigation, the police interviewed everyone close to Tammy, including the two friends who'd spent time with her in the two days that she was last seen. No one seemed to have a motive to want to harm her, and she hadn't mentioned any plans to anyone. It wasn't known whether she was taken against her own will or if she left by choice, and if so, where she could have gone. Most worrying of all was the fact that she was still very unstable and may have been acting irrationally out of fear. Her friends told investigators that Tammy and Linda had been arguing a lot lately, mostly about the direction of her career. They added that Tammy had stated on several occasions she couldn't wait to leave home to set out on her own. But Linda refuted these claims. She stated that her relationship with her daughter was fine, taking into account the stress that she'd been under lately. She, in turn, felt that one of Tammy's friends may be responsible for her disappearance, and specifically mentioned Keith's name as someone to be looked at. She claims that Tammy had told her that Keith was likely going to end her life, and Linda felt strongly that he was the one that she was afraid of. But after he was interviewed, investigators felt he wasn't a suspect, and no arrests were made. What doesn't make sense is, if Keith was the man she was so afraid of, why would she have called him directly and asked him to pick her up and take her to the beach? This has never been explained. What is known is that Tammy was wearing a blue floral shirt with a denim skirt and flip-flops at the time of her disappearance, and she had a gray purse with her when she was last seen. But none of these items have ever been found. Witnesses later came forward to report that they'd seen Tammy on the day that she went missing, and that she wasn't wearing any shoes, but this has never been confirmed. Now, this is the part of the video where I'll usually do a deep dive into the investigation surrounding the disappearance and what police found and what evidence they followed. But I can't this time, because police never found anything. I mean, they literally found nothing. It was as if Tammy was zapped clean off the face of the earth. The investigation ended as quickly as it had begun, because there were no trails to follow, just nothing. She was dropped off by Keith in the parking lot that day. Then she just ceased to exist. Linda added that she left the house without brushing her hair that day, which was highly out of character for her. After all, the girl was a model. But her mother is certain that she didn't run away, since she'd been planning to return to Hollywood in about three months and had told her mother as she walked out the door, Bye, Mommy. I'll see you later, okay? Bye. These were the final words spoken by Tammy, and she was never seen again. Those words remained with Linda until she passed away years later in 1995, never having learned what happened to her daughter. At one point, it was suggested that Christopher Wilder, also known as the Beauty Queen Killer, who had claimed the lives of several women in the Florida area during the mid-80s, was responsible for Tammy's disappearance. He was known to falsely offer women the chance of modeling for magazine covers before ending their lives, but no solid evidence was ever found to link him to Tammy, and he was never officially named as a suspect since he lost his life during a shootout with police in 1984. 
There was another suspected serial killer at work in the area at the time, though. John Crutchley is thought to have ended the lives of as many as 30 women between 1978 and 1985. But once again, no link between Crutchley and Tammy was ever found, and it's unlikely that he had anything to do with her disappearance. Linda stated on several occasions that she believed Tammy had inadvertently stumbled across a huge money laundering operation while at the spring break after party, and that her life had been threatened by someone involved. She felt that she was then targeted by these people, and eventually either abducted or had her life ended, since she had information that could not be allowed to be brought to the police. Whether these claims are true or not, we'll likely never know. Tammy's case is one that rings of not only tragedy, but also a promising life that changed in the span of just one night. She had the support of the people around her. She was tended to by doctors and even sat across from police officers who were willing to listen. But fear is an emotion that cannot be easily contained, and we can only imagine the terror she must have been feeling to remain silent under such dire circumstances. Still to this day, Tammy has never been found, Tammy? nor has a single shred of evidence that proves she's either alive or otherwise. It's almost as if the young woman never even existed. There's just nothing at all left behind. Unfortunately, whatever the case may be, Tammy's career ended just months after it had begun a career she'd spent her entire childhood trying to create. We can all hope that Tammy made it out of this situation safely, and that she managed to start up a new life somewhere else. In fact, following Tammy's disappearance, Cocoa Beach detective Harold Lewis received two telephone calls from an anonymous woman, claiming that she had proof Tammy was still alive. In the first call, the woman said that Tammy would make contact when the time was right. During the second call, she said that Tammy was doing what she always wanted, going to school to become a nurse. Proof of these claims was never provided to the police, and it's largely believed that these calls were a hoax. But it really makes you wonder. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of True Crime Stories. If you enjoyed this video, check out this other interesting case I covered, and don't forget to subscribe. It's totally free and keeps you up to date with all of my future videos. You can also click that join button below to support the channel and see new videos long before everyone else does. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.